you really need to be careful how you design your resume. If you design your resume the wrong way, you might end up spending the next 12 months in the job market getting all sorts of rejection emails which might lead you to believe no one is willing to employ you but you would be wrong there are lots of open roles in the job market and there are lots of employers looking for talent in the market and it will only take you to make a few changes to your existing resume to stand a better chance of landing those jobs now i know the job market is very competitive these days there's a lot of competition around popular roles like data analysts data scientists which in some way is fueled by scarcity of open positions and it's making things a little more difficult than usual but there are also bad resume habits that are cutting people off from genuine job postings and these bad resume habits must end. So today I want to focus on designs that will help you get out of the job market as fast as possible. What's up guys, Wally here. Welcome back to the channel. Let's start by broadly classifying resumes into three buckets. You have entry level beginner resumes, transitional mid career resumes and expert level experience resumes. So starting with the entry level beginner resumes. Let me show you what a bad resume design looks like. And then I'll show you what, in my opinion, a good beginner resume should look like. Now take a look at this terrible beginner resume. The first thing that jumps out at me is how scanty it looks. It looks like this person was forced to design a resume. First, there's so much white space that should have been used to showcase whatever experience this individual has. The second thing is that there are no projects to back up the skills this person claims to have. So no projects. And then lastly, there are no certification or courses to tie the skills and projects that have been highlighted here. So no certifications. The one thing they did good here is that it's a one pager resume, which is a cardinal rule for every beginner entry level resume. You want to make it as concise as possible. A one pager resume generally means less words to worry about, less experience to reference and generally less points to prove. Most beginners typically have little to no relevant work experience to showcase anyway, so there is no need to overburden yourself to give what you don't have. However, a one-pager resume comes with a price, and that price is clarity, brevity, precision, thoughtfulness into what stays written down and what needs to go away. So as a rule of thumb, a one page resume should be aiming for around 400 to 500 words, which would look like this. When we try to compare both resume designs is that simplicity is super important. When you're faced with choosing a resume design, always go for a simplistic design rather than an aesthetically pleasing design. You don't want your resume to look like you just pulled out a resume template from Microsoft Word or a template from a blog on the internet. Those type of resumes are over-engineered to look attractive. And believe me when I say no one cares about how beautiful your resume looks like. Now, let's talk about the structure of the resume and the reasoning behind each section. The first thing you will notice is that this resume starts with the project section as against the usual educational section for a beginner resume. This is counterintuitive for an entry level resume because everyone thinks as a graduate, your degree is a badge of honor that should be proudly displayed. But the truth is no one cares about your degrees or at least that isn't the first thing anyone wants to see. The first thing they want to see is proof that you can do the job and what better way to prove by listing projects as your first section. So. In the project section, ideally you want to highlight between three to five projects and these projects could be academic projects, custom projects, individual projects related to the job you're applying for. And for these projects, you want to state what the project was about, what tools you used, what approach you used, what was your methodology, what was the outcome and what impact did the project have. If you ever took a course that had a capstone project in them, then this should be fairly easy for you to come up with. The next section right after your project section is your technical skills section. And this section is also very important. In this section, you want to very quickly list out all the tools and the skill set that you are familiar with, possibly skills that you've gained from working on the projects you've mentioned above. So if you say you know how to use Power BI, Python, Excel, SQL, Tableau, Google Sheet, whatever it is, you want to list them here. It could be very tempting to list out tools that you don't know how to use, but try not to do that. You don't have to be an expert at all of the tools that you list out, but you want to 
at least know how to use two of the tools very well. And if I were to recommend any two, I would say Excel and SQL. Next section right after this is your certification section. And this section shows proof of how you came across the projects and the skills that you mentioned above. So if you claim to know how to conduct an A-B testing experiment, for example, then you had better completed a statistic course. Or if you claim to know how to use Power BI, then it makes sense for you to have taken the PL300 certification. This certificate section offers you the opportunity to showcase your course repertoire and how much time you've invested in your learning and development. And speaking of learning and development, let me introduce you to the sponsor of today's video, DataCamp. If you're interested in learning to become a data analyst, DataCamp is an education platform that specializes in data science and AI. With over 500 interactive courses covering data and AI literacy, programming languages, business intelligence, basically anything related to data and artificial intelligence. What I like about the platform is that you can take unlimited assessments for free to assess your skill level and identify any skill gaps in any of these subject areas. And once you are done with the assessment, you can fill those gaps with relevant courses or take up any of the industry leading certification programs to get you ready for a data analyst, data science, or data engineering job. What is also great is that data camp certifications are super recognized in the industry and can be a real plus and a resume for anyone looking for a job in data. So check out their platform to browse through their courses and certificates using the link in the description below. Thank you DataCamp for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to the rest of the video. Typically you want to have more than one certification or course listed. You will notice that I have more than one certification here and the reason is because I believe for anyone to claim to know data analysis, to know about the techniques, the concept, the tools, to be able to pass an interview, it would take nothing less than seven courses. So if you haven't done up to seven courses, roll up your sleeves and continue taking courses. Now Moving on to the work experience section here, I want to focus on two things. First is your experience as, as in your job experience. And secondly is your employer profile. As a beginner, you don't have any tangible experience. So how do you come up with experience? Three ways. First, if you went to a college or university, then your academic experience could be a source of experience to summarize in your resume. A second would be voluntary experience, and this is where you worked as an intern or apprentice to gain experience in a line of work. And lastly, social experience, and this is leadership capacity of any kind, whether it is in leading a social club, captain in a sport team, or running for office. Quick caveat here, social experience should only be used sparingly and only when they are explicitly requested for. Remember, you are aiming for brevity and precision and you don't have to write down every experience you've had. So now let's move on to your employer profile. Sometimes your employer's profile is more important than the work that you did for that employer. If your previous or current employer is a well-known brand like Google, Meta, Amazon, Tesla, Deloitte, Goldman Sachs, then it's easy to ride on their waves. Generally, recruiters want to hire up meaning they want to hire talents from companies they know to be bigger or perceived to be bigger and better. This is why an ex-bank employee will likely get hired faster than someone from a random company no one knows. However, for most people, our previous employers are not well-known brands. So the question is, how do you enhance their profile? How can you make them more recognizable? If that is not possible, how can you raise their profile a little bit? That is an answer you must find yourself because every company is unique and can be described uniquely. For example, are they the market leader in that industry? Are they the top employer in your area? Do they have high revenue figures that you can highlight? Who are their customers? Of course, it is optional. You don't have to do it, but trust me, it makes a huge difference. And after fixing your previous employer's profile, add in two to four bullet points for each job description of what you did in the company. The last piece of this resume is of course your educational section and this is there isn't really much to think about other than highlighting your highest qualifications. Your highest qualifications could be a diploma, a bachelor's or a master's degree. For most people there is no need to 
oversell this section employers just want to know that you have a formal education an exception to this rule is if you attended a school that has an established reputation either in the field you're you're in or in the location where you are at but even at that you've got to be careful you don't want to present that as your only advantage in today's world what people want to know is can you do the job and even better have you done it before this is a singular most important question an employer wants to get answered before hiring anyone. So everything we've looked up until this point has been a beginner resume, fresh out of college with little to no experience. In my next video, we're gonna look at transitional mid-career resumes and how you should design it to stand out from the competition. It is very different from beginner resumes. It has its own structure depending on the job description and the requirements for the role. I have included the beginner entry level resume template below so you can download it and tailor it to fit your needs. I hope this video has been helpful to you. As always, smash the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.